Humans have been the smartest species on the planet for a long time, but in the most ancient crania, the occipital was the most, and the frontal region the least developed, and the increase in the elevation of the latter marked the transition from barbarous to civilized man. Indeed, Neanderthals had an underdeveloped frontal region and overdeveloped occipital region, in comparison to modern humans. The Neanderthals may be our closest evolutionary cousins, but these close family members did some truly terrifying things to one another. Neanderthals walked on two legs similar to us, used tools and may have created art and music. These hominids used fire, and likely lived and hunted in complex social groups similar to the way that Stone Age Homo sapiens did at about the same time. In order to survive in a primeval world of mega-predators, ice ages, and competition from subhumans, these early humans would have needed to live with an animalistic ferocity to survive. Only the most savage and barbarian humans could survive in this unforgiving world, which is hard for us to imagine today. Paleoanthropologists are not super clear on when the Neanderthals first began to separate themselves from our common ancestors, but the fossil record tells us that Neanderthals were definitely around by about 300,000 years ago. They mysteriously disappeared roughly around 40,000 years ago as anatomically modern humans first began to move into Europe. Indeed, there is no reason to suspect that ancient humans, whether they be Neanderthals or Homo sapiens, were any less territorial, any less barbaric, or any more civilized than we are today. In fact, smashed in skulls, spear wounds, cannibalism, and high levels of testosterone, evidenced by their thick bones, suggest they were even more prone to conflict than the humans of today. But, given the difficulty of interpreting the fossil record, scientists are divided on why these near-cousins and quasi-ancestors of modern humans no longer walk the Earth. Many believe that modern humans outcompeted Neanderthals, eventually leading to the Neanderthal extinction. In the end you've got one human population that replaces the other, which historically does not happen in a peaceful manner. However, we're not implying that there was a blitzkrieg in which modern people marched over the landscape and systematically slaughtered the Neanderthals. The period of overlap in Europe between modern humans and Neanderthals was relatively brief, lasting roughly 3,000 to 4,000 years or so. The radiocarbon dating technique typically used to determine the age of fossils has a 500-year error margin, so it's difficult to get precise dates on what was happening with many of the fossil remains archaeologists have unearthed from this period which lasted from around 45,000 years ago to 40,000 years ago. Many researchers believe advanced hunting weapons, especially the bow and arrow, and other tools may have helped humans outcompete Neanderthals. Neanderthals are known to have made use of basic spearheads, axes, and other tools that were often only chipped on one side of the blade, known as Mousterian tools. Meanwhile, humans had technology often focused on knife-like blades that may have allowed more precision in certain uses. The research also suggests that the development of group hunting may have provided the groundwork for organized combat in Europe. But you can imagine a similar scenario when modern humans armed with the bow and arrow encountered Neanderthals while on a hunt. It is exceedingly unlikely that two armed and dangerous human groups would have just laid down their weapons and sat around the campfire telling stories. For example, according to a recent study, violence was very pervasive in Stone Age Europe, a time when farming was first practiced. Bioarchaeologists discovered that more than 10% of the skeletal remains of almost 2,300 early farmers, from 180 sites, showed wounds produced by weapons. International scholars claim that, contrary to popular belief, the Neolithic era was not characterized by peaceful coexistence and that, in some areas, the Stone Age may have seen a spike in conflict and violence that resulted in the eradication of entire tribes. In fact, more than 10% of the samples revealed damage that was likely caused by blows to the head from blunt objects like stone axes. Also discovered were several instances of penetrative wounds that were likely caused by arrows. According to the experts, some of the injuries were connected to mass graves, which may indicate the eradication of entire populations. The ability to discern between fatal injuries, as opposed to post-mortem breakage, as well as discriminating accidental injuries from weapon-based attacks, has increased considerably in recent years. Human bones are the most direct and least biased type of evidence for ancient conflict. The disappearance of the Neanderthals in France, one of science's most perplexing mysteries, may have finally been answered, according to a famous fossil researcher. Shockingly, Neanderthals were brutally killed by us and, in some cases, eaten. 
In one example, a Neanderthal suffered a gruesome end and was consumed by humans. The fossil from a cave in France exhibits butchering scars, comparable to those found while cutting up a deer. The terrifying and contentious suggestion comes after the Journal of Anthropological Sciences published a paper about a Neanderthal jawbone that was reportedly slaughtered by contemporary humans. The research team's leader now believes the meat was consumed by humans, and the teeth were used to make a necklace. According to French anthropologist Fernando Rossi, the jawbone was most likely sliced into to remove flesh, including the tongue. Crucially, the butchery was comparable to that performed by humans in the early Stone Age, to break apart deer carcasses. Scientists and Neanderthal enthusiasts who believe Neanderthals vanished for causes other than conflict will be outraged by the suggestion. Neanderthals were a hardy species that emerged in Europe 300,000 years ago, and survived three ice ages until disappearing 30,000 years ago, just as modern humans arrived from the Middle East. Some scholars believe Neanderthals were either unable to compete effectively for resources with Homo sapiens, or were more vulnerable to the effects of environmental change. Others, though, believe our encounters were violent and fatal for the Neanderthals. The discovery in southwest France, according to some anthropologists, gives substantial support for that theory. Previous excavations uncovered bones assumed to be purely modern human. However, an archaeological team re-examined them and discovered one that they concluded was Neanderthal. It was also covered with cut marks, which are similar to those left behind when deer and other animals' flesh is peeled using stone tools. Indeed, the jawbone provides critical proof that humans attacked and occasionally murdered Neanderthals, taking their carcasses back to caves to eat or use their skulls or teeth as trophies. People have attempted for years to bury the evidence of cannibalism in Europe, but we must admit that it occurred. It was also possible that humans discovered the jawbone and used its teeth to build a necklace. This is a critical investigation. More evidence is needed, but this could show that modern humans and Neanderthals were living in the same area of Europe at the same time, interacting, and that some of these contacts were hostile. In fact, another Neanderthal skeleton discovered in France, and dated to 36,000 years ago, exhibited symptoms of a scalp injury inflicted by a very sharp weapon delivered by a modern human. This does not show evidence that we methodically exterminated the Neanderthals or that we ate their flesh on a regular basis. However, it adds to the evidence that competition from modern humans most likely contributed to the extinction of the Neanderthals. In point of fact, some scientists believe that Neanderthals were deliberately exterminated by modern people after discovering a skeleton with a spear wound in an Iraqi cave. According to newly rediscovered bones, a modern human killed a Neanderthal man between 50,000 and 75,000 years ago in what is now northern Iraq. The discovery provides minimal but tantalizing evidence for the notion that modern humans assisted in the extinction of the Neanderthals. The most likely cause of this injury is a projectile weapon, which, given who had them and who didn't, implies at least one instance of interspecies conflict between Neanderthals and modern humans. The victim, now known as Shanadar III, is a 40 to 50 year old male with arthritis and a sharp, deep incision in his left ninth rib. The most likely weapon of choice was a spear thrown with a spear thrower, which Neanderthals never utilized. The proof is the deadly wound in the skeleton of the Neanderthal victim. The researchers also used a specially calibrated crossbow to launch stone-pointed spears with varying forces to imitate a thrusting spear, and a long-range projectile weapon like a dart. As an experiment, weapons were stabbed into animal carcasses. The researchers next analyzed the wounds caused by the various scenarios, discovering that the thrusting spears caused significant damage, fracturing many ribs. With the projectile weapon, even though it travels faster, it is much lighter and leaves prominent cut marks in the bones without damaging neighboring bones. It's similar to what scientists saw in Shanadar 3. The tests also revealed that the Neanderthal S rib had begun to heal before he died. By comparing the wound to medical data from the American Civil War, when antibiotics were not available, the researchers concluded that the Neanderthal likely died within weeks of his injury, possibly as a result of related lung damage from a stabbing or piercing wound. As stated, because modern humans had invented projectile hunting weapons and Neanderthals had not, the researchers inferred that the spear's likely suspect was a modern human. Modern humans employed spear throwers, which were detachable handles that fitted with darts and spears to essentially stretch a hurler's arm and increase the strength of the projectiles. 
As human weapons technology advanced, Neanderthals continued to use long thrusting spears in hunting, which they probably tried to keep between themselves and their prey, rather than hurling for personal safety. According to one recent study, such Neanderthal hunting gear, including spear points, were quite complex. Scientists are continuing to enhance their understanding of early Homo sapiens and Neanderthals in the hopes of unraveling the enigma of how the latter went extinct while we did not. Previous research on interbreeding between the two species shows there was some interbreeding, but the latest evidence clearly indicates the opposite of affection in many cases. Thus, if the Shanidar 3 instance is also a case of interspecific violence, and if Shanidar 3 overlaps in time with modern humans, we're starting to see a pattern. According to the researchers, competition for resources with modern humans, as well as other reasons, may have contributed to the extinction of Neanderthals. What's more, a fragmentary skull discovered in a bone pile in Spain may have belonged to one of the world's oldest murder victims, a very early Neanderthal. The skull has two similar shaped wounds, which were most likely caused by another human attacking the person with a hand axe. The cause of death was blunt force trauma, and the death occurred around 400,000 years ago, give or take a few thousand years. Archaeologists have discovered one of the world's oldest cold cases, a skull fragment discovered in a Spanish cave from an ancient murder victim whose head had been battered in. The skull was discovered in the Atapuerca Mountains of Spain, which are laced with limestone caverns, sinkholes, and tunnels archaeologists descended a chimney into one of those caverns and discovered a massive pit of bones. The Pit of Bones site contains thousands of skeleton remains from at least 28 different human species, including early Neanderthals and another hominid species. Scientists are unsure why so many victims were buried in this area, but many believe it is one of the world's oldest burial sites. Other members of the group deposited the bodies at the site, by throwing them down the chute. Scientists excavating at the site discovered a skull fragment, but other matching fragments of the skull were discovered years later. Scientists painstakingly recreated the skull after many years, exposing two holes punctured through it. The skull belonged to an unknown sex of an early Neanderthal, and was a young adult. The researchers investigated the chemical content and structure of the bone around the holes to solve this ancient murder mystery, and discovered that the head wounds had not healed before death, implying that the man or woman died as a result of his injuries. While it's plausible that the person fell down the chimney and hit his head on a limestone boulder, it's improbable that he sustained two such wounds from an unintentional fall. Furthermore, the slow settling of the land over hundreds of thousands of years did not provide enough energy to cause the person's head wounds. Murder was the only reasonable conclusion. Scientists believe the wounds are the result of repeated blows with the same weapon inflicted by another individual, maybe in a face-to-face -face encounter, based on the similarities in shape and size. They don't know what the object was. A spearhead or a stonehand axe are two alternatives. While ancient hominins may have cannibalized and butchered one another, another theory is that brains won out over brawn. And that rather than destroying our enemies in some epic battle, our ancestors may simply have been savvy survivors, steadily growing our numbers while our burlier brethren met their demise.